Because when we protect nature, we're also protecting ourselves. T's done. And that's very important. So we're not only taking care of nature, we're, we're also taking care of us. And I think that that's very important. You know, we are definitely a part of nature. Good afternoon. Today I'm just out here in the trees by the creek and uh, I watched a video about deforestation and things um, on a really great channel uh, that you guys probably already watch. <laughs> But um, Bjorn, uh, Andreas Bullhansen's channel, he was talking about deforestation of trees. And um, he actually shows, uh, in one of his latest videos, uh, where they have taken down a big part of his forest. This seems to be a, an ongoing problem, not only in Norway, but here in the US as well. Um, I don't have any forest to show you right now, but I did include the hashtag because I think that we all need to learn awareness about this and we need to educate ourselves about this and try to educate others about that, about deforestation and the effects. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, hopefully you guys are interested in that uh, because trees and nature in itself even the smallest of plants are very important to our ecosystem. And, um, you know, whether you know it or not, trees and plants actually communicate with each other. They have a very complex system for being social. Um, for instance, if there's three trees, let's say there's three, three different trees. If one of those trees gets sick, the other two trees will actually sit, no, hold on. If one, one of those trees gets infested by insects, it can actually send a notification or send a, a warning to the other trees to let them know that these trees are being, this tree is being attacked by insects. So they will actually prepare for that to sort of defend themselves against an infestation of insects or disease. Um, now I've also seen on Bjorn's channel that people are saying, well, we can just plant new trees. If you know, you just cut down a whole forest, we can just plant new trees and yay, we're all great. No, that, it doesn't work that way um, in some instances because there are what is called mother trees and those are generally the older trees. And what those do is help the saplings to grow strong and healthy and basically protect them, keep them fed with nutrients and the things that they need. And they all communicate through the root structure via fungi. So these older trees or mother trees is what they're called, they actually help the saplings to grow bigger and stronger through a memory system of the environment around them. So they know what type of environment they're in. And they, they basically will, not basically, they do adapt to their, to their surroundings. And that's what helps them to grow stronger and, and better. A lot of people don't realize that, but they do communicate. Trees do communicate through these root systems and they, if one tree is sick, say you have another another example, you have three trees, say the middle one is sick and, and dying, not getting enough nutrients, the other trees will actually send extra nutrients to that tree to help it heal. I'm not saying that these things can get up and walk around, you know, um, things like that. I'm just saying that they're, they're smart. Trees are, are smart and they can read each other through their root system, almost like a nervous system you will. And I think that that's a very important thing to keep that going. Um, because if we cut down these mother trees, the saplings that you plant may not may or may not survive. 
depending on because they, they're new to that environment. They they probably have no history of being there. So the soil is different in different regions and in different places around countries. So it has to get accustomed to that soil as it grows, which probably, in, in my guesstimation, hinders its growth. It may or may not. I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on that. But I do know that the mother trees do help the other trees to grow and be healthy and to grow stronger. And the other interesting thing that I know is that trees typically take care of their kin. Um, they actually know who's been around them and who they're from. So if a tree drops, you know, some sort of seed and it, and it, it grows, it knows that that is its family, so to speak. And it will help them before it will help others out in the forest. And it's just a really interesting and complex way that they are. And it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You know, most people just look at trees. Well, sorry. Some people just look at trees and go, oh, it's a tree, yay. You know, or they get, but I'm so fascinated with trees and how they grow and how they, they just, they're just so beautiful and immense immensely amazing. I think it's really cool how they go towards the sun and they grow. It doesn't matter if they have to grow sideways and up or leaning and up or whatever. They, they grow however they can get to the sun. Um, I find that really cool. So that's basically what I wanted to say in today's video. Also, you know, if you want to help out, try going to some, or try looking up some uh, local, um, some local uh, ways to help. Uh, there's got to be some local groups in your area, or maybe in the next town over, or in the city. Uh, there has to be some sort of group to help educate about deforestation and against deforestation and, and chopping down very vital forests and things like that. Um, now we do need we do need wood for to build houses and to have products and things like that. I understand that, but you know, it's it's just a hard debacle on 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 things for some people. You know, oh, I need paper. Well, not so much anymore. I mean people who do that sort of thing now have computers. We're using less paper now than I think that we ever have in our history, except for, you know, when we didn't have paper, which was a very, very long time ago. But, you know, I think we can, we can sort of work around taking down vital forests and things like that, you know, and killing off those forests, we're killing ourselves off because we need nature just as much as nature needs us. Well, nature doesn't really need us. Um, it could go on without us. We, on the other hand, cannot go out without nature. So we need to protect our lifeline in this world. Um, because if, if we keep on destroying nature, we're gonna destroy ourselves, inevitably. Um, so protect nature, protect us as a human species or as a species of nature, we need to protect ourselves as well as the forests because they're beautiful and they deserve to be protected. Um, in my opinion, I think that humans are the most lethal adversary or most lethal threat to nature itself, um, potentially. Um, I, you know, trees and nature have been around since the world has been around so uh, it's it's lasted past all kinds of disasters and um, just rebuilt itself but I think that humans could probably potentially destroy all nature and that's something I think that we potentially have a way to do with nuclear bombs and atom bombs and things like that and just cutting down all the forests and things you know I don't think we could destroy it completely, but we would do a great, we could do a great deal of damage, and that is 
what we don't need to do. So, you know, just uh, sort of pay attention to what you're doing. Don't litter. I know around the city here, there's tons of litter everywhere because people just don't have any respect for A, themselves, um, and they don't have respect for nature, and they're just sad individuals. So uh, don't litter. And, uh, you know, give a hoot. Don't pollute. Uh, I can't remember the owl's name, but he's right along there with, with Smokey the Bear. But, all right, I'm going to get out of here. I talked to you guys about that. I actually brought a kettle today instead of spilling my water all over the place like I did last time. That was pretty embarrassing, but I thought it was funny. So I brought the proper gear today, and this is an Optimus uh, kettle. It's an aluminum kettle. It actually really works well. Uh, fits in my backpack. It's really small. I want to give a shout out to Optimus. They are not paying me to do this. This is not a paid promotion. Um, it's you know they didn't send it to me or anything like that. I just really like this product, so I wanted to to give you guys a heads up that these are really good products. Um, this Optimus kettle is bulletproof almost. I mean it's it's aluminum, so it's not bulletproof, but it's nice and light, and you can. Pack it really simple into a small bag, haversack, whatever. Um, it's a really good, a really good product. Genuinely, honestly, I would just switch to Optimus um, just because they're awesome. But um, also have this really. Never mind. I'll save that for the next video. So, cheers, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Catch you on the next one, and stay safe. Take it easy.